What does it truly mean to be Polish? Is it about speaking a language, celebrating Chopin and pierogi, or something deeper, something written into the very DNA of the people? Recent genetic studies are uncovering surprising truths about the origins of the Polish people, and the results challenge what many thought they knew. Far from being a homogenous group with purely Slavic roots, Poles today carry the legacy of Celts, Balts, Germanic tribes, steppe nomads, Vikings, and even ancient Middle Eastern peoples. The Polish gene pool, it turns out, is as complex and layered as the nation's turbulent history. For centuries, Poland has stood at the crossroads of Europe, a bridge between East and West, North and South. From Roman merchants and Gothic migrations to Mongol invasions and Jewish diasporas, Poland has absorbed wave after wave of peoples and cultures. Add to this the dramatic partitions, shifting borders, and centuries of foreign rule, and you have a country whose identity has been shaped not only by resilience, but by remarkable diversity. So, how much of Poland's genetic heritage is truly Slavic? What unexpected ancestral threads show up in the modern Polish genome? And how do these revelations shape how Poles see themselves today? In this video... We'll explore the ancient and modern genetic studies that are rewriting the origin story of the Polish people. From mysterious prehistoric settlers to the legacy of medieval kingdoms and empire-driven migration, prepare to discover a side of Polish history that's been hiding in plain sight, all the way down to the molecular level. Let's dive into the hidden DNA story of Poland and what it reveals about identity, history, and the surprising journey of a nation. To understand the genetic origins of the Polish people, we need to go back thousands of years, to a time before nations, before writing, and even before cities. Modern Poles, like many Europeans, trace much of their ancestry to the Indo-European migration, a massive prehistoric movement of peoples from the Eurasian steppe. Between 300 and 2000 BCE, groups now associated with the Yamnaya culture spread westward from the Ponic caspian steppe in modern-day Ukraine and southern Russia, bringing with them new technologies, horse domestication, wheel carts, and bronze tools. More importantly, they brought a language that would evolve into almost all modern European tongues, including Slavic, Germanic, Celtic, and Italic. These early steppe migrants intermingle with Neolithic farming communities already living in Central and Eastern Europe, who had themselves descended from even earlier waves of migration from Anatolia and the Near East. The result? A complex genetic blend that form the foundation of the modern European gene pool and a key ancestral layer for today's Poles. Archaeological finds in present-day Poland, such as those from the Cordyware culture, circa 2800 to 2300 BC, show clear ties to the Yamnaya people. Genetic testing confirms that these ancient individuals carried wide DNA haplogroups like R1A, which remains one of the most common paternal lineages in Poland and across much of Eastern Europe. Interestingly, this haplogroup also links Poles to other Indo-European populations as far apart as India and Scandinavia, highlighting the vast reach of these ancient migrations. So when we talk about Polish DNA, we're not talking about a single origin, but rather a mosaic that includes prehistoric hunter-gatherers, early Anatolian farmers, and Indo-European pastoralists. These deep ancestral layers form the bedrock of Polish genetic identity, long before the first Slavic tribes ever arrived. The Indo-European roots of Poland remind us that identity is never static. It's shaped by constant movement, contact, and change. And it's only the beginning of the Polish genetic story. While the deep Indo-European roots laid the foundation, it was a Slavic expansion that truly shaped the ethnic identity of the Polish people as we recognize it today. Starting around the 5th to 6th century CE, Slavic tribes began to spread rapidly from their original homeland, likely situated in parts of modern-day Ukraine, Belarus, and southern Poland. This wave of migration saw Slavic-speaking peoples move in all directions, east into Russia, south into Balkans, and west into Central Europe. In what is now Poland, Slavic tribes began settling the Vistula River basin and surrounding areas, mixing with remnants of earlier populations, such as Germanic and Baltic peoples. Over time, these settlers formed distinct tribal groups, including the Polans, Vistulans, and Masovians, names that still echo in Polish regional identities today. Genetically, these early Slavs carried a high frequency of our 1A Y-DNA haplogroups, linking them closely to the Indo-European steppe ancestry discussed earlier. 
But the Slavic expansion wasn't purely genetic. It was also cultural and linguistic. The spread of Proto-Slavic languages and agricultural techniques helped unify disparate tribes and lay the groundwork for early statehood. By the 10th century, the Piast dynasty had emerged, founding the first Polish state under Mieszko I and officially embracing Christianity. This marked the transformation of Poland from a patchwork of Slavic tribes into a coherent political and cultural entity. Thus, the Slavic expansion didn't just populate Poland. It defined it, turning a region of migrations into the birthplace of a nation. While Slavic ancestry forms the backbone of Polish identity, the Polish genome also carries traces of neighboring peoples, especially Baltic and Germanic groups. In the north and northeast, Poland historically bordered regions inhabited by Baltic tribes, such as the Old Prussians, Lithuanians, and Lat Gallians. These groups were not Slavic, but their proximity led to centuries of interaction through trade, warfare, and intermarriage. As a result, many Poles today carry minor genetic signatures associated with Baltic haplogroups, particularly N1C, a marker more common in Baltic and Finno-Ugric populations. To the West, Germanic influence was especially pronounced during the medieval and early modern periods. Before the Slavic migrations, parts of what is now Western Poland were inhabited by Germanic tribes, such as the Goths, Vandals, and Burgundians. Later, during the Osidlung or Eastward expansion of German settlers in the 12th to 14th centuries, many Germans migrated into Polish territories, founding towns and introducing new technologies and administrative systems. These settlers left both cultural and genetic legacies. While not dominant in the Polish gene pool, Western European haplogroups like R1B appear in small but measurable frequencies, particularly in Western regions like Silesia and Pomerania. Linguistically, traces of German remain in place names and loanwords, and socially, this period contributed to the formation of Polish cities and guild systems. Though often overshadowed by Slavic identity, Baltic and Germanic influences are essential threads in Poland's complex genetic and historical tapestry, reminders of a land shaped by centuries of cultural crossroads. Though often associated with Scandinavia and Britain, the Vikings also played a surprising role in shaping the early history and even the genetics of what is now Poland. Between the 8th and 11th centuries, Norse explorers, traders, and warriors traveled along river routes that extended deep into Eastern Europe. Known as the Varangians, these Norsemen established trade networks and settlements throughout what is now Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. But their influence didn't stop there. They also reached areas of northern and western Poland, particularly along the Baltic coast. Archaeological evidence points to Norse-style burials and artifacts in Pomerania and the Vistula River Basin, suggesting direct Viking contact or even settlement. Cities like Gdansk may have started as trade hubs connected to this vast Baltic network. Genetically, the Viking legacy can be seen in small traces of Scandinavian haplogroups, including I-1 and R1AZ-284, which are associated with Norse ancestry. While these markers are far less common than dominant Slavic ones, their presence hints at centuries of cultural and genetic exchange across the Baltic Sea. Beyond DNA, Norse influence is also visible in place names, legends, and medieval alliances. The Piast dynasty, Poland's first royal family, interacted with Norse rulers and may have even descended from mixed Slavic and Norse aristocracy. Though the Viking genetic footprint is small, their legacy in Polish history is a reminder how interconnected early medieval Europe truly was, shaped by movement, trade, and unexpected cultural blending. The Mongol invasions of the 13th century left a deep scar on Eastern Europe and traces in the DNA of modern-day Poles. While Poland was never fully conquered by the Mongols, their repeated raids and brief occupations had lasting impacts. In 1241, the Mongols launched a massive campaign into Central Europe, devastating regions of Poland, including Krakow and Silesia. Though the Mongol forces eventually withdrew, the trauma of their invasions echoed through generations. But beyond destruction, the Mongols also brought movement of peoples, ideas, and even genes. Modern genetic studies show that some Poles carry low but detectable frequencies of East and Central Asian haplogroups, such as C2 and Q, which are rare in Europe but more common in Siberia and Mongolia. These traces suggest limited intermixing with steppe populations, 
possibly to the Mongol invasions or trade and migration routes that followed. Additionally, the Mongol Empire facilitated the Silk Road, connecting East and West in unprecedented ways. Slavic lands, including Poland, were indirectly influenced by these networks, leading to occasional contact with Central Asian merchants, mercenaries, and nomadic tribes. In Eastern Poland, and among some groups with Tatar heritage, such as the Lipka Tatars, the genetic and cultural imprint is more visible. These Muslim communities settled in the Polish, Lithuanian Commonwealth from the 14th century onward and have left a unique legacy in Poland's ethnic and genetic landscape. Though small in scale, these Mongol and Eastern genetic layers add another dimension to Poland's story, a reminder that even brief historical encounters can leave lasting biological and cultural footprints. Recent advances in genetic testing have revealed surprising insights into the Polish gene pool. While Poland is often seen as ethnically homogeneous, DNA studies tell a more complex story. Modern Poles are primarily descended from Slavic-speaking tribes, but their DNA also contains traces from Celtic, Baltic, Germanic, and steppe nomadic ancestors. Genome-wide analyses show that many Poles share deep ancestry with early European farmers, Indo-European migrants from the Pontic steppe, and even small amount of Neolithic hunter-gatherer DNA. Unexpectedly, some regional studies have found genetic overlap with Ashkenazi Jews, Romani, and Tatars, especially in areas with historical communities. These findings highlight centuries of coexistence, migration, and sometimes intermarriage. Another surprise, a small percentage of Poles carry Y-DNA haplogroups associated with Scandinavian Vikings and Central Asian peoples, suggesting ancient military or trade contact. Altogether, Polish DNA reflects a rich, intertwined past, far more diverse than many would assume from the surface. Modern Polish identity is a powerful blend of tradition, resilience, and rediscovery. While many Poles proudly trace their roots to the West Slavic tribes that formed the early Polish state over a thousand years ago, today's sense of identity goes far beyond that ancient past. Genetic studies have revealed that the Polish people are not as homogenous as once believed. Instead, the DNA of modern Poles reflects layers of influence from Celtic, Germanic, Baltic, Jewish, Viking, and even Asian nomadic populations. These hidden threads tell a story of centuries of trade, conflict, coexistence, and cultural exchange. But being Polish isn't just about genes. It's about shared history, surviving partitions, uprisings, occupations, and rebuilding a nation from ruin. It's about language, literature, music, faith, and family. It's about honoring local customs while embracing a European identity in the modern world. Today, many Poles are becoming increasingly curious about their roots. DNA testing has sparked a renewed interest in genealogy and local history. People are rediscovering forgotten ancestors, regional traditions, and even distant genetic cousins abroad. At the same time, Poland continues to evolve. With immigration and a growing diaspora, Polishness now includes people of mixed heritage, dual identities, and global connections. So what does it mean to be Polish today? It means carrying a legacy of endurance and pride. It means knowing that while your culture may be rooted in Slavic soil, your genes may whisper stories from far-off lands. And it means looking to the future, where Polish identity remains strong, complex, and beautifully diverse.